What is good? We're back. We got some of our final installments of Rookie Talk for people doing rookie drafts at the right, proper time. Um, so that's exciting. We've been bouncing a little back back and forth between redraft and dynasty. Bouncing around. About to uh, about to do a little bit more redraft as the season gets started, and then we'll go back into you know talking dynasty and a little bit of redraft in, in season, of course, because in seasons like dynasties kind of played a little bit like redraft obviously there's a little bit more market watching i always find redraft trading being pretty tough it's difficult uh to really get anything meaning it's tough enough to unless, do dynasty unless you, trading unless you, you fleece somebody i feel like it's really hard to you got to have like a rushing quarterback or a really great second tight end yeah or a running back Right, what, to trade I mean, away, which I never just, want to trade away. Got to really back. match up with somebody. They got to have an extra something. You know, it's just really dynasty. There's depth charts, and you can be excited about the futures. Just, just never had a ton of redraft trade success as far as getting them done. I always send trades, but uh, never really happens. But nonetheless, we got some rookie drafts coming up. We've been in a bunch of rookie drafts. We have rookie rankings. We've done so much rookie content. You can go check all that out at YouTube. Uh, if you're on the tubes right now, be sure to subscribe, like, comment below. Uh, you can go to RevelryBrewingCo.com and get a, a T-shirt from your boys. Support your guys. Sick tea. Um, we a couple of y'all. We see see, see y'all. You can enter in a free uh, contest to get a one of those free T-shirts. Uh, you can send us any screenshot of a five star review on Twitter, Instagram, uh, our. Our email address, whatever the you got. FFDynasty at gmail.com. Yeah, send me a screenshot of a five-star review from iTunes. Or, Gave away one already. Yep. And and if you've already given us a five-star, send us a, send us that screenshot. It doesn't have to be a new five-star. Obviously, that's the point. But if you've already done it and, and we appreciate you, we will enter you into the contest. So I'm going to give another one out pretty soon here. And not too many. Not There was a, a decent round that first entry. Not as many on the second one. So yeah, get it in them, there. Got a pretty coming. good odds. Keep them coming. And uh, like I said, today we're going to wrap up kind of the final rookie rankings. Uh, but I'll probably edit them again two days after the show's over. Right. Uh, and these do around. live these do live on the Patreon. So we got the, yeah. the patrons have a link to this uh, rookie rookie rankings. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll say something here. And then, like he said, all these preseason games will happen and something will happen. Someone will injure. Bump, someone up, will up, f- down. Someone will ball out. Someone will get hurt. Right. And so it's kind of an ever living thing. Right. Right. It kind of has rankings and tiers go. And we're going to be doing super flex tight end premium. And if you're not super flex or tight end premium draft, we'll kind of try to address it as we go through this this particular draft season. Not too affected by it. So it's like pretty the easy same. to figure it out. The, the, the super flex versus non super flex is almost the same thing. I mean, maybe right. take pick it out of that first round, obviously, and non super flex. But yeah. any consideration is super flex. Uh, yep. Real quick, I know you guys hate the long intros, and we've already lost you, but at this point, we uh, we were supposed to have Matt Foreman here tonight uh, to cl- complete the tripod. He's got some rookie rankings, and we were excited to talk to him. He had a, a unfortunate thing happen in his family, so he's taking care of that, um, but we just want to give a shout-out to Matt, say we love you, miss you, and we're here for you, and he wanted us to, to give a quick sh- plug to you know mental health awareness. Um, you know, if you have a friend or family member who's, who you see struggling or is a little bit off, you know, don't be afraid to, to reach out, say something, you know, and just tell, tell, tell the people that you love, you know, that you love them, you know, because you might not get to. And so just, uh, and if you need help, you know, reach out to somebody, try and find help. There's plenty of online uh, free counseling and stuff. You can go talk, just, just talk to somebody, find someone to talk to because it's, it's a real thing. The pandemic really exacerbated it and, uh, you need to be looking out for your friends and loved ones. Right. You, you never know what somebody's going through, so try to be kind. But you know, eventually, uh, maybe I tell, <laughs> tell somebody what's up. But you never know really what's kind of what anybody's going through, and 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 you never know when the last time you're going to talk to somebody or that you love, care about. Uh, so you know, never be scared to. Well, they haven't called me. Uh, you know, be had go ahead and reach out because uh, you know things happen. So uh, let's just. Leave it at that. Matt's Matt personally uh, has some stuff going on, uh, but he he is actually physically fine. Uh, so no no worries there. If you want to let him know that you love him and you've been enjoying him, shout out at him at, uh, at Fat Mormon on the Twitters. I'm sure he would enjoy 
uh, a little love and that we missed you and that you know he if we were if we're starting right now at the one one he might have Tyler Algier here <laughs> I don't know um, so would have been interested in, I was really interested to see have this conversation but tonight it'll just be us two so let's get it rolling let's uh, let's keep it moving and uh, so one one pretty easy like I said super flex tight end premium I'll try to address some things as we uh, move forward about whether or not you know if it wasn't tight end premium or if it wasn't super flex so uh, and this is uh, like I said uh, always PPR for us full point uh, so Brees Hall 1-1 one, one. I don't think there's really much debate in there you might mm-hmm. be a little bummed with with the with the Makai Becton news and now a little uh, Zach Wilson who knows uh, but not, nevertheless, Brees Hall is the 1-1. One, 1-2 one. Uh, one, for me would be Kenny Three Sticks, Kenny Walker. Uh, look, we're, w- when you're in a rookie draft, um, it's the easiest place to replenish your stock of running backs. They're hard to find. They're hard to come by. And when there's a guy or, or a few with, I think, a special talent and a workhorse ability, then I'm going to put those guys ahead of uh, probably the receivers nine times out of 10 in most drafts. Um, And for me, I really like what Kenny Walker can do. Obviously a little injury with him and a little penny battle to begin with. But I think once he gets out and really starts spreading his wings, you're going to see what Kenny Walker is all about. Um, Just a a beautiful, pure runner. And I think he can catch the ball just fine. I know the target share wasn't what you want it to be, but it's I'm not letting it scare me off of it. He does have hands. He physically has them. And I think if you throw it to him, he'll catch it just fine. He's a premier athlete. You can't tell me that, you know, nine out of 10 of those guys, that's not a teachable trait and that you can't learn how to do that. And he wants to work and what, you know, how how about, you know, if you're an asshole and you don't want, you just think you're God's gift, like maybe you're not going to work on it. But, you know, I think a guy like Kenny Walker will go out there and and do the necessary things to be able to catch, you know, he's not saying he's going to be an elite receiver, but if I could just get three, four, five, three checkdowns a game and that, that three for 20, three for 10, three for 30, sometimes that's all I need for a guy who's as special as Kenny Walker running the ball. Um, and I think he's very capable of doing so. Yeah, um, absolutely. I love that. You got to have him at two. You don't have to. You don't necessarily have to take him at two. Now, you could fuck around and trade out at two thinking you can get him a little later. And then the, the, the bigger money leagues or maybe it's half point PPR or something. He, I've seen him go one, two. I ha- we had all those industry mock. We had all those experts on to do that industry mock. None of them boys wanted Kenneth Walker mm-hmm. at one, two. Right. Uh, but but when you get in your home leagues, when there's like real money on the line, I've seen him go one, two, so I'm yeah. not even going to fuck around. If I got one, two, I'm taking Kenneth Walker. Yeah. And I mean, really, you know, I know this is it a might take on, a minute, you know, right, it might right, take a right. minute. And he, he was getting some buzz. It was like, right. and I saw some blurb. He might actually do better than you thought he was going to do this yeah. year, you know, and, and a little surgery. And then, well, it's not a sports hernia. That's I'll good. tell you what it's not. Yeah. Well, well, then what the fuck is it, Pete? Well, what is it, Pete? Not as bad as a sports hernia, I guess. So they're hoping for a quicker turnaround. I think he'll be ready for week one, which just kind of puts him back where he was kind of you're gonna have yeah, to but wait you a missed minute. some time and who knows now and penny yeah. was missing time so this was a good but didn't happen anyway uh i think one i think the first round for the most part is is uh too not too much you can't really lose i don't think i know this is a weaker class or whatever if you've been following it for a while it's not that weak um, man but, maybe not know, compared to what the 23 class is supposed to be but right i think i think the first deep, round is, is pretty solid and, and right off the rip you're getting Brees hall kenny walker and then uh, drake london would be the first wide receiver off the board for me um, and now he's got a, he's a little nicked up, but you know, you started made one play and then you started seeing buzz bubblings, boilings of, of how good Drake can be. You saw the one catch in that preseason game of him, the guy who couldn't separate, looking to separate fine in all the videos that I'm seeing and on the field right there. Um, and then, you know, exited swiftly after that with a little bit of a knee issue. So hopefully nothing serious. It doesn't seem to be, but Drake would probably be my number one, uh, followed by number one wide receivers. receiver. Uh, followed by Traylon Burks. Uh, again, you know, there's some rumblings of, you know, well, he's playing in the fourth quarter, third quarter of the preseason. Like, you know, Vrabel's, Vrabel's that that kind of guy. Like, hey, you're fucking up. I'm, I'm going to put you out there, make you do some things that, that maybe you didn't think you were going to have to do. You're not better than anybody. You know, you're, you're going to play like a third, fourth stringer. You're going to give me maybe some effort or... or that like a third or a four stringer, we're going to put you out there. We're going to make you play. You know, I want to see what you can do. Your endurance isn't where it needs to be. Get out there, play the whole damn game. Um, you know, so, but 
what he can do physically dominating the SEC. Look, we have huge breakdowns on a lot of these guys. So I don't want to get too crazy into it, but Burks is definitely getting some shade. So, you know, maybe the combine wasn't exactly what you thought it was quote unquote going to be, but the, the GPS tracking the top end speed of what he does have once he's getting going after those first 10, 20 yards, when he can roll down the field, you already see baby. him burning people in practices down the field, making great catches, big bodied. And then, you know, in the short yardage stuff, you could throw him the bubble, the screen, the, the, you know, the, the overs, whatever you need. And once it's in his hand and he's rolling, he's a locomotive, like you said. So still strong on Burks. Garrett Wilson's probably the next guy off the board, been wavering a little bit on him, but just the all around skills of Garrett, you know, you don't love the jets and the, especially cause I do like Elijah Moore um, a good bit. It was definitely a bummer landing spot for him. You knew somebody was going to go there. Right. Uh, but he is a phenomenal player and talent and should get a fair amount of opportunity. I mean, the, obviously, Zach Wilson has a connection with Elijah Moore. Right. But. Garrett Wilson know, seemed to maybe throw a little shade Zach Wilson's way in the Flacco <laughs> answer. Go check that out. Probably not good for Garrett Wilson long term. <laughs> I don't with think Zach he really Wilson, meant anything but, by it. I think he's just a rookie well, and not, not very. Uh, savvy on the microphone it's there. funny because it's true kind well, of thing well sure I, mean, I think he was speaking the truth but he didn't know that he shouldn't have said it like that oh, okay you know, he like, hasn't figured out how to grease the court yeah right. someone's mom's getting courted after that <laughs> uh zach was like you're lucky i'm hurt right now yeah keep your mom's you know yeah. safe and locked up this, so. it's tough with garrett wilson because he is so good and this is dynasty and so you kind of need to just Close your eyes and take the player and, and bet on the talent and not necessarily be bummed about the situation because we've been in this place before where, oh, we hate the situation, but then it's totally different right. and not what he thought it was. Just bank on the talent, and that dude is really good. I don't have him. The athleticism, the ability to play the position, all the little small things. Garrett Wilson's got a lot of really good things going for him. I think all around probably the – the best all-around right. receiver out of these guys. The other guys just have maybe a little bit more. Pre-draft, I probably I probably had him number yeah. one as the wide receiver yeah. in this in this wide receiving core. And then going to the Jets, you kind of have to – you don't have to take him as the first wide receiver. I haven't seen him go off as right. the first wide receiver at all. So. so, you know, again, I don't think you can go wrong with any of those guys. Somebody might so – one of those guys out of the law of averages is probably going to be a bust, uh, but – who knows the last couple of drafts there hasn't been a whole lot of busts in the first couple rounds of your or first round of your uh, rookie draft for wide receivers so that's right they're putting out you know good wide receivers at a healthy clip right now so um the next guy would be jameson probably jameson williams for me still holding it holding it down there with with pickens and sky more right on on his heels i think a lot of people have you know all the drafts that we've that i've seen for the most part and we've been in williams seems to be one of the fallers um, but he's the know. most obtainable. He's the most like trade up forable. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Like if you have a late first, you can kind of get into the Jameson sweepstakes. I have a problem not putting Jameson at fourth overall. Like I, 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 I battle between him and Burks, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Wilson, I'm just kind of the de facto third of that tier because of the jets i guess you know which for right or wrong might not be not be right might not might be wrong you know i don't i don't know i just the more as the off season went on the more i got like enamored with jameson williams even though it the hype is probably going in the opposite direction because he's not playing it's well, the that's lions the thing. that's the thing he's, you know? he's easy to knock down because there's there's not gonna see there's him no buzz minute. hype or anything and it's like maybe maybe november seems to be like the target to like really get him up to, like he might be playing a little bit but to really get him up to where you might see old jameson williams and you might not even see that until next year they don't they certainly don't need to that was kind of like a luxury pick for them and and matt campbell has that team dan headed campbell. dan campbell has that team headed in the right direction they have other weapons you know amon ra is a stud and Chark, by all accounts, is looking pretty good. And Hawkinson is healthy. And Swift is a monster. So, like, an offensive line is great. This is nothing new that you, our regular listeners, have heard us say. Where does he fit in when he comes back? You know, I don't know what's up with Jared right. Goff in the long term. I don't know. But he's a talented motherfucking dude. And yeah. electric. And he's has just, that extra yeah. special X factor. Right, right. And it's just so intriguing. He's got game-wrecking potential. And, and that's why and more I think than just sure sure he's, he's not just a deep threat he can do some other things he's electric um, and, and he's the guy that we've I've talked about this multiple times that everybody in the stadium knows he's getting it and there's nothing you can do about it 
Um, and you know, Burks is a lot of these guys that we talked about are kind of like that, but Jameson just has some crazy speed, uh, element to his game. Um, and, and isn't just speed, I guess is, you know, really right. Right. Exactly. And I think, I think really all four of those guys, I'm not going to be surprised if, if the top five wide receivers, any one of those guys is the best right. out of this whole group, right. you right. know, well, that's what I'm saying. I don't, there's, there, you, you could get down to pick 11 and, 12 even and say I wouldn't be surprised if any of those guys um, are better than you know the guys that I had ranked ahead of them this is I think this is a pretty pretty solid I don't think you can really go too too wrong here um, you know the next guy for me would be George Pickens yeah I was wondering I moved him up above Sky Moore like today I was like fuck it let's put him up there I'd been creeping up and the hype you know maybe that's too high maybe 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 it's uh, you know but He's so good. I had him, We've liked him for so long. I had long. him up here pre-draft, post-draft, moved him down a little bit because of the landing spot, because of the log jam, and we're not sure about the quarterback. But now we're getting the buzz. We're getting the hype. We're getting, you know. And if you, know, you don't pull the trigger early, you're not going to get him. I can, I can, I have no problem giving the nod to Sky Moore over George Pickens just for security of, of the situation, be, good, being better Probably more people off the rip and more people – are going to be in this guy maybe, but the Pickens, is, Pickens is is buzzing, you know, real hard right now. And, you know, I'm probably going to miss him in a startup, but I'm willing to reach up here towards the middle middle part of the first round of a yeah. rookie draft to get in that sweepstakes. And I, that's I, not I, that egregious of a reach. Honestly, I think in most drafts that you're going to see, it'll be Jamison Williams down below Pickens and Moore. Um, so I think that would probably be a little more Pickens and Moore will move up to like the six and seven. And then Matt sent us a draft today where Burks fell to one eight. Yeah. You know? Well, that could be possible too. Um, Cause so, he's playing with the third and fourth quarter guys. Right. And but I've seen, I've like I said, I've seen all the, some drafts go and it's, it's pretty similar with just a few small moves in the first round of guys, just preferences. But this has been, dealer's choice all over the place man sometimes olave is up there sometimes burks is down sometimes jameson williams is down sometimes christian watson's way up that you know uh so it's just kind of been all over the place man I, there's I, not so, a lot of consensus outside of Brees. so james drake london you're right pretty much yeah uh jameson uh pickens at seven and then sky Moore probably at eight you could swap uh pickens and more and i don't really have too much of a problem with that um, and then, so this is where it kind of comes in first quarterback, Kenny Pickens. Um, and it's really, it's not about Kenny Pickens really for me, the player here. I mean, can you pick it, pick it? Sorry. I got Pickens on the brain. Yeah. It's how not could about, you not? it's not about Kenny Pickett, the player necessarily for me. Although, you know, there is some upside with athleticism. He has played a lot of football. You go to Pittsburgh, they're, they're, weapons I trust the franchise. There's, 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 you know, a good coaching staff in place. There's weapons around him. Um, they just do things the right way that he's been around in that area for a while. Like they got the best look at him and decided to go with him in the first round. He does have the first round capital, but at the end of the day, and you could say, Hey, pick us out in my first round, or you could say, Hey, I'm taking Pickett after Jamison Williams and, and Sky Moore and, and George Pickens are below him. It's basically for me in this, in a super flex setting, do I need a quarterback? Do I need a, a, a second quarterback or do I need a third quarterback? And really the idea for me with Pickett is that I'm going to draft him if I'm in need of finding another quarterback with probably using him to get to another quarterback because I've had 100 deals in super flex get to the point of where we're getting close and then the, the guy go or girl go, yeah, man, I like the deal, but I, I just need to get a quarterback back. So if I'm if I'm looking to upgrade my QB two or looking to find a QB three that could ascend into my QB two, I'm fine with taking Pickett here and leaving some meat on the bone with trying to maybe, you know, use Pickett as a catapult to, to launch me into being able to upgrade my quarterback position um, because of all the things that I mentioned beforehand. Um, and I, I don't think he's a bad player and he could turn out to be awesome. Uh, but I, I'm probably going to sell him before I know that he's awesome. And hope once we get a little buzz heading in the right direction, you could say, you know, 13 out of 15 against in the fourth quarter, third quarter last week was garbage and it didn't prove anything to you. It just proved to me that he can get in there and do what you asked him to do. Uh, he can move the ball. Yeah, it was a bunch of short stuff. But I mean, it's probably going to be a bunch of short stuff with, with some shots here and there and, and get that 
incorporation of some boot action in, in so that, that Ben Roethlisberger didn't want to run that part of right. Canada's offense. Uh, so low key athletic with right. some rushing up four upside. seven wheels I think on Pickett. Um, and the thing is here, I've talked to some various Steelers fans, and and they're not sure of Trubisky, and they fucking hate Mason Rudolph. They like boo him when he comes on the field. They're done with Rudolph. Yeah. Not that the fans have any implication on what Tomlin's going to do, but right. if you can find a Steelers fan, I think they're pretty excited about Pickett. Yeah, yeah. I think in general, you just need a little buzz, and then I'd be, I'm taking him here. I'm putting him in here because I'm, if I'm, if I'm quarterback needy, if I don't need a quarterback, I'm fine taking him out of the first round. You can. Yeah, just, I mean, I, I could definitely take the next three wide right. receivers or, or and, and running back ahead of him, but I'm fine. I'm fine taking him here because there really isn't a consensus moving forward, and and someone's probably going to reach for the running back, but you can you can probably find a way to trade up to to get one of the next guys that fall to the early to mid second round, you know, because I would have Dotson next, and which which you do too. I would actually have Dotson over Pickett if we're just straight up ranking right, them, you right, know. Yeah, I would rather have Dotson over Pickett. That's why I had the caveat. There right, of, you got him off to the side. Right. You don't have to take your Kenny Pickett's off. You just move him to the That's side. Right. That's right. And it's so it's situational. How much do you really need that quarterback? You laid all Context, that out really baby. well, right? And that's why rankings are so hard because it's like I can't tell you. You got to take Pickett over Dotson. It's like, right. do you really fucking need Pickett? And can you figure out a way to turn him into something better? That's right. great context and, and and really what you need to be thinking about when it comes to this. But Dotson, you know, right next up next for us, yeah. he doesn't really ever go that high. He's never in the no. first and round. Got, like, is he? That, you ever see Dotson that, in the first again, round? That's, again, the caveat of I have him ranked here. You probably don't have to take him here. Somebody's going to take Olave, James Cook. Uh, Probably Spiller, Christian Watson, maybe, maybe yeah, Christian Watson, Rashad just a little, White, little down right now because there he's been on the pup and there's not buzz. But I mean, it's like literally yesterday when he came off, there was a video and there was buzz already. People want to be buzzing on Christian Watson, so um, you know. But yeah, I mean, Rashad White, that's a good call. I mean, Damian Pierce just had a huge game. So Foreman sent us a draft. Damian Pierce went one eight in in right. the rookie draft. That's what I'm. That's why I'm taking those couple of running backs early because the, people are thirsty, son. It is hard to trade for a running back in a league where anybody you know is trying to win anything because you need you know two of them and you can play zero and that's fine. I've won every which way. I'm not telling you there's a right way or a wrong way. I've had the most success with a little bit more robust situation, and you can. I just feel like you can never go wrong because you can always trade a running back for you know a what? nice little. Uh, treasure trove of of gifts i've said this before and i'll say it until the cows come home what's the position that the people in your league reach out and say hey i'm looking to trade for a running back right all day every day every single year people are needing to trade for a running back like yeah no shit and you know what i love is when i hear someone say well i got a lot of running backs so i can trade one like because no you don't like as soon as you think you have enough three weeks later you don't have enough you don't have enough running backs so don't just go trading one because you think you have a lot even if you're so so plentished What's the word? You're just so like you have so many Plentiful. that you can't even start them all. Yeah. Just I'm not fucking moving one. I mean, I, you know, if I can get a really good deal on a really good trade, then I'm down to move them. But like, I'm not just going to go moving wide receivers because I have a I think running I have back. a lot. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's running it's back situational depending on team build and where you're heading. Uh, you're heading towards and moving veterans to right. youth and, right. and all that all contextual yeah. but don't just go willy-nilly trading a running back because you think you have enough so so dots in next but you don't have to take them there you can right. wait uh then chris olave uh then christian watson rounding out the first round um like i said there's there's bubble and there's buzz already around christian watson olave is going to be probably just fine so all that we said about the running back you're still not taking james cook there in that first uh no okay nope it's um, an indictment on James Cook. Did you know his brother was Dalvin? I did. Okay. I did. And then next, leading off the second round, I'm taking David Bell. Woo! Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to get David a little... David Bell over James Cook. Going to get a little Watson action uh, to end the season. Maybe Finally got some up clarity. Bell. We're not going to get into any Watson discussion because it doesn't... Should we just talk about Deshaun Watson for the rest of the yeah, show? No. Uh, but Browns organizationally and what where they're going forward regardless of what you think of Deshaun Watson next year 
when we start the season, he's probably going to be considered a top five, top six quarterback. Um, that this not not saying that that's like that's what I think. I think that's what's just going to be the general consensus. He's going to come back and be and he, be probably really good. And he's even going to get you know where we maybe we didn't think he was going to get anything this season. He's going to get you know a couple games to kind of get back into form, going in and building something with Amari and and David Bell and and this team rolling into next season um, and maybe even into the playoffs if they can scrap together some some wins who knows but I like David Bell a lot I know you know there's a lot there's people who are saying not drafting him bumping him way down but I like the landing spot I like that he was he's been very at the top end of his craft all the way from high school uh, all the way through college um, and now I think he's going to be at the top of his craft I mean I don't think he'll be a necessarily elite elite but I think he can be you know a hey. great stud number two slot on, receivers on that team and just be crushing PPR points. Get a lot of PPR week points. in, week out. Um go, I think go. I would have to take Bell. I, I got I think I would have to take Cook. I got Cook next. Um, just because and I'm Cook fine with does that. fucking anything. Everybody nobody's gonna have David Bell there. So you don't uh -huh. have to take David Bell there. I mean if I was actually in the draft and was like, all right, well maybe I could take Cook and then trade, you know, David Bell two three two four typically about where he, he falls in super flex drafts. Uh, maybe even a little later if people go heavy on running backs. You're right. James Cook is, is going to be the value there. He's probably not lasting until the second round anyway. Um, one of those – Dotson's going to get pushed down uh, probably, and maybe even Christian Watson gets pushed down um, a little bit. But I like David Bell a whole lot moving forward. Really, that's my point there. And then James Cook would be the next player off the board because running back is really – I just I don't know what the hell is going to happen in Buffalo. Like I can Zach like Moss James, I can like buzz. James Cook all I want. Like I think he's a good player. I think he's a good he's a good enough to be, you know, pretty good receiving back. And now if they go all in and design the offense around getting James Cook touches week in week out, then sure he's worth taking end of the first round. But what's probably more likely to happen is that he'll be good one week and then good another week and then unstartable for two weeks and then good for another week and then unstartable for two weeks is most likely what's going to happen. Uh, there was supposedly a little bit of a, a tift between Dayball and McDermott that McDermott wanted to balance out a little more, wanted to run the ball a little more. And Dayball's saying, hey, no, we want to, uh, you know, we're going to stay doing with what we're doing right now. Sling so, this motherfucker. you know, and now you're like you said, I don't think Singletary is a bad player. Uh, everybody loves Zach Moss. I wasn't as high on him as everybody else, but I mean, they liked him coming in. All of a sudden he was in the back in the doghouse last year for some reason. And now he seems like he's right back in the mix of things. So, you know, it just could be a little bit of a mess. I understand that he's a, he's a very good receiver. Um, and, and that's kind of what he's built for and that he's got good Dalvin Cook. He's got good genes, Did good Levi's. Sure. Um, and I'll tell you what, in startups, I'm drafting a lot more Cook than I am in rookie drafts because he just falls into sort of, you know, that ninth, tenth round and sometimes gets skipped over a couple times. And then I will take him and just sit him on the roster and see what happens. Uh, but in, in rookie drafts, I find myself uh, not taking a whole bunch of him. Uh, but I will certainly take as many times as I can over and over and over again. Uh, I, Isaiah Spiller. Um, I got Isaiah Spiller next. Even with on all there. the uh, Josh Kel John Ke Josh Kelly love, sure, going whatever. On right now. I, I think he's we know, the number two back. I think right we now. know what Josh Kelly is. Spiller looks just fine out there as well. Um, you know, I think everything will even itself out. I love what Spiller has going on. Plus receiver, uh, just vicious uh, mover, violent mover. Vicious. Great with contact. Um, Again, dominated the SEC. Um, Strong fucking receiver. Right. And like, I, so I just like great every, market share. I like everything. It wasn't Rashad's white market share. Right, right, right. But it was a fucking great market share. Right. Rashad White, who's old as fuck and came from junior college and had one year of good market share. That Rashad in that, White. In that, that conference. That yeah, right. But that's. That's and, all and, and, a, and an old ass fucking quarterback that right. the, might, might even not play this year. You know, I don't know. When is Tommy coming back? Week I don't one? know. Like, I don't know. Nobody I gets to know. ask Tommy that. He no. does no. whatever Tommy wants. But, you know, Spiller, I believe, will be the number two there. I think we know what Josh is. I, the, the Chargers really like Spiller already. They've, they've been, I, you know, kind of seems like just bursting at the seams to tell you how much they like him and just trying to seemingly – you know, temper it back, but he played well when he got his last year, uh, last week. 
Uh, so Spiller's been a guy for me that I've been drafting. Eckler doesn't have a contract. He should hold out because it's his last chance to get paid. Get your fucking... What is he doing? Why um, is there no, like, hold in? Why is Eckler right. such a nice fucking guy, dude? Go get your money, man. Right. This might be fuck your last chance. Fuck these owners. Right. Fuck them because they don't give a fuck about you, man. As no. soon as you get hurt, they're going to cut you with, he also for has, nothing. Right. And he also hasn't been the healthiest guy. Right. And, and Get your money, Eckler. What are you doing? They're dying for a Please, reliable... man. I know you listen to the show. <laughs> They're dying for a reliable, too. I like where that offensive line's heading, and obviously they got Herbert. So let me get Spiller. Uh, next up for me, this is tight end premium. If it wasn't tight end premium, I don't make this pick. i probably push him to top of the third. Um, that far down, half a round? But Trey McBride, I mean, this this he's the tight end one in this group. And, you know, I know a lot of people would probably disagree with this, and you might have to wait. You're probably going to have to wait. Ertz was great in that situation last year. Probably going to be great again this year. But I think McBride could find his way on the field a little bit this year. They're missing uh, some nuke. Uh, but this this guy just coming off 90 catches, uh, just great in yak. Looks like a receiver out there, but has the big body to kind of block and do a bunch of other things for you. Uh, so, yeah, you know, you're probably not getting return on your investment right here. But in tight end premium, uh, you know, a guy that can hand, can be more of a receiver but has the big body Um kind of looks like a receiver when he's got when the ball's coming at him and the ball's in his hands and he's moving around out there but then you see the frame and he looks like a fucking tight end uh he's so big. I, I, went, I like trey mcbride a whole lot it's hard not to like him and, and and you know whether you're watching the tape or you look at the stats like you said 90 catches he was first in catches last year first in yards first in yak first in contested catches one touchdown kind of weird but yeah, um, bad team. A lot, lot, a lot of stats there, and then when you're watching him, like he does make a lot of contested catches. He does make a lot of awkward catches, kind of off short ones, right. and and, and you, you can see why the Cardinals were interested. That being said, not sure I trust the Cardinals drafting skill position players. Is they're better <laughs> off just trading for them? Uh, but you know that. Be, all that being said. You kind of have to wait on a tight end no matter what. It's really rare for a rookie tight end to come in and, and like, increase his value. And Pitts it. You know? And even with Pitts, he was already up there. So, right. I guess he went from, like, 1-9 in startups to, like, 1-5 in startups. Right. But, and he did have a ridiculous year, just only one touchdown. Right. But, it, you know, probably not going to have – like, there's just not that many that are going to just while out their rookie year. So you're always going to have to prepare to wait on your tight end to come to fruition. And I don't think he's going to answer your tight end premium desires and needs this year. Right. You know? If you can get a little bit out of him and, and see the promise, and then just Zach Ertz literally dropped into this offense midseason and was like tight end fourth from there on out or yeah, something like it was that. was wild. So, like, there's room for a guy like – for a tight end to eat in the system. Kyler's locked down there for a while. Uh, so McBride, again, you probably don't have to draft him here, but I do see him going 2-5, two 2-6 five, two in tight end premium situations. Uh, so next for me, Damian Pierce. Obviously Ooh. just came out and slayed the preseason. Ooh, hot. Um, great pass protector. Pierce over Rashad. I don't know if you saw him at this at the uh, Senior Bowl like I did, but, I mean, he was great, a great <laughs> pass protector. at the Senior Bowl. Uh, 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 uh. He was a great pass. He's a strong pass Did protector. you know I was at the Senior Bowl? He's good. good uh, I think he has good hands. I liked I liked every part of his game. The only thing was like, why didn't he play more? Like, I don't fucking know, man. Why didn't... It is weird. It's it is the, a big question mark. How about the coach just for whatever... Why didn't Mark Ingram play a lot back in the day for the fucking Saints? Remember that shit? When you were like, what the hell's... Because he was Mark? fucking right. Sean Payton's I'm mother. I'm just saying, like, shit happens That was where, documented. Where somebody doesn't play a whole lot. Like, and for whatever reason, he doesn't think that Damian Pierce does what he needs him to do. It doesn't mean that he can't be good. I'm just saying that it is certainly probably a little bit more of an outlier, but I'm not taking that as a reason not to draft Damian Pierce. I liked what I saw when I watched the tape. Liked what I saw when I was at the Senior Bowl. Um, <laughs> and... You know, say so, senior bowl one more time. Uh, senior bowl, and he was <laughs> he just he just absolutely slayed the preseason here. He's he's in then more, most importantly in line. It's one game. Most importantly, he's in line to be and uh, the 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 RB one in an offense. But how does this affect Marlon Mack? It Shout directly, out the sleeper directly affects Marlon Mack. <laughs> Get both of them. Um, and I love, I've been drafting the combo in startups as much as I can because Pierce was pretty cheap before this and you could get Marlon Mack, which is, you know, I haven't been dra getting heavy running backs in Dynasty early because the way the board plays out, but, you know, you can get a Pierce and a, and a, and a uh, 
Marlon Mack a little later. So I like Damian Pierce. That's here. so hot, Oppor- man. That's so, that's so hot. What? But he could. When we had them boys on for the industry mock, none of them wanted to take Damian Pierce. Finally, uh, I think it was Kane Fassell took him, mm-hmm. and he didn't want to. He didn't even want to own taking. He him. wanted to sell him. He just was like, as soon as you get him, you can sell him because yeah. you know because next year he's, he's definitely right. getting replaced. Right. No way he could be the starter next year. They so couldn't, they couldn't have just found themselves a running back. You think? You think they found themselves a running back? It here? seems it could be very, very possible. Um, and I, it, either way, I'm going to take the opportunity, and I can make that decision. You know, week four or five, week six, after I see him on the field, see him doing something, and I mean, you're burning up a second pick. I mean, you might you burned up first round picks before, so I've burned up plenty of second round picks, and I've burned up a million third round picks and been wrong. Would you? But, are you? Are you trying to move him? Me? Not not really. Not necessarily. I mean, it just it all depends on how, what my team looks like and and really what I see from him. I want to see what he looks like one on a game real game. I want to see what he looks like in a real game. And really, the opportunity is going to be king for just about any running back. And I think he's got he's athletic enough to, you know, it's not going to be like, oh, we well, got the opportunity, but he's, you know, a trash player. Like, I think he's a good enough player. If he gets the opportunity, he's probably going to score you fantasy points. And that's what we're trying to do. So um, next for me, uh, Rashad White. Slides, slides Stop in here. Stop the slide. Stop the slide. Uh, you know, I like Rashad White. But just did you fine, know the target share was like in the 98th right. percentile? I don't care. I mean, he's he's a good receiving back. And, uh, you know, Tommy's old. And if Tommy plays one more year and Lenny stays healthy for most of the season and does what Lenny does and is third and near the top of catches again, Rashad White going to be rendered fairly useless on a week-to-week basis for you. Did you know Lenny was out of shape? Keyshawn Vaughn's still there. You can, you know, have a snarky response to that, but I mean, he's he's got the same he draft capital. He's second on the depth chart. He's got the right same now. draft capital as Rashad Might White. Might even be a few picks better than Rashad. Took him took him a while to work up to there and get Tommy Struss. Had a little had a little you know couple of spurts last year where he looked pretty good. Geo's still on the roster, uh, which you know one 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 bad move, a drop, something stupid from Rashad White. He doesn't pick up a pass, bro, and and maybe he was getting somewhere. Tommy's going to be like, get the fuck out of here. So that's Tommy, not Bruce Arians? No, that's definitely going to be Tommy. Like, Tommy's going to be like, get the fuck out of here. Like, it, I, I know I can bring these guys in, and they'll do what I need them to do. Um, so uh, Rashad White there, I don't mind taking the player. If he, he falls a lot in, in startups, um, he's usually like one of the last rookie running backs in startups. But not in rookie drafts. Not in rookie drafts. Weird, huh? Uh, it is, yeah, I mean, it's always a weird it's People need running backs correlation in rookie drafts. And how, how all that works. So next for me, Malik Willis kind of slid off to the side here. I had him up a little higher to start this whole process in the, in the you know after the draft and since we've been moving guys around. Basically, he was he had the the intangibles, the the rushing ability, and the howitzer for an arm to make him in the discussion for the one one. Um, hey, in, we had Garrett on. We we discussed Brees or Malik, and we all went Brees. That yeah. was a I felt real good. <laughs> <laughs> for those idiots that had a pre NFL draft rookie draft, just go ahead um, and change your league next year. Take it to a vote. That's yeah. some dumb. Fucking shit, right <laughs> oh, there. Oh, bro, but there's, you know, it's uh, yeah. give the advantage. The guys really know that you can't yeah. even know, man. You didn't know though, because Malik Willis went in the third round. So anyway, he gets drafted by the Titans. We all know that. We we if you just watch the highlights, you see why he could have been regarded as uh, the you, one one. Ryan Tannehill's jobs on the and, line. If you watch the fucking highlights, but then if you don't, if you actually watch him play, you were like, that's that was almost a pick. That was why he was pushed down a little bit, and he always was going to need to sit for a minute. But they, this is a good organization and a good head coach. And the what he can do on the field for fantasy purposes, I have no problem burning a mid-second on Malik Willis and seeing what can happen. Like I said a minute ago, like I've burned up, we've all burned up picks that don't amount to anything. We're in the mid-second. You could say, oh, I hit those all the time. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, we, we do crush them. I mean, we, you I know, mean, we sure, always get, like, I do fine. We but get some I, cheap you know, and... I we, we, also draft Denzel Mims in the second round. True. And, and, yeah. You know, Idiot. Right. So. Uh, still some hope. Denzel. Right. I but mean, yeah, it was a bust. I draft Hakeem Butler in the second round. Bust. We were, um, we, we were taking him into the first there. But so, uh, I mean, shit I mean, happens. But I think after Spiller, I mean, after after 2-5, five, fire will. Yeah. Take agreed. It. Like, it's it's what he can fantasy wise on the field. He's probably the have second, to wait, second or know? third best rushing quarterback already out there. You are you saw what he could do rushing and like how he could just get around that corner and he's he's right. built pretty solidly already. He's got the speed and then McCannon. he can put it on the run and then you know 
uh, Vrabel talks a little shit in the post game, basically being like, I pulled him and put Logan in so he could hit open because I needed him to hit open receivers. Like, you know, I mean, well, Vrabel's going to beat him down and then build him up and, and Vrabel's going to take care of it. And that, and, and you, you're going to have to wait. This is like right. a Trey McBride situation. You, you're not going to see him this year. He's not taking Ryan Tannehill's job this year, and he's probably not taking a Ryan Tannehill's job next year. I know everyone talks to the right. like they have an out with Tannehill, but it's fucking 18 million dead. Yeah. 18 million dead is a, is a strong number. Now, I mean, unless he just sucks say, and you want to get rid say, of him. Right. They could say, hey, we're, we don't want Tannehill anymore because he let us down. We got a cheap third round quarterback here. We'll eat some of this cap, or maybe we can they trade, him, trade him um, and eat some of that money and then. You know, it's see what happens. Possible, Tannehill but could I also be the quarterback it. there for three more years. It's, right. And you're just sitting there with Malik Willis and we see what happens. Um but, but what a great situation for him to sit back and learn and, and just be a part of But if he was great, he would just earn the way on the field. And it's yes, you are right in some regard there. Um but you know, I'll I'll take the shot of, of what could be because he doesn't have to be great. There used to be days when guys could sit and learn sure. and figure he it out for a minute. He didn't have to be an actual great NFL quarterback to score me a bunch of fantasy points. But the thing with him is is there isn't the draft capital you know you're gonna get like three years of that. Sure, of sure. Letting but, him figure it out. He's right. a third round pick, so if he does if it doesn't work out initially, for you're sure. fucked. For Whereas sure. with like Trey Lance, he's probably gonna get a couple years. Either. Yeah, he'll he'll get some. But I mean Malik's gonna sit, we'll see what happens, and then you know, the, the Titans aren't somebody who are scared to run a bunch of pass first, do what everybody else is doing. They'll muddy it up. We'll get a running back involved. We'll run the shit out of this quarterback. And uh, we're, we're going to make it work with what we have, um, which, you know, they've been making it work with what they have and getting a whole bunch of people riled up because they play old school football and there's no way they could be good, but they just somehow continue to just Crush win every AFC. single year. Yeah. Uh, so good for them. So next for me, Tyler Algier, shout out to Matt Foreman. Just again, uh, I like. Pierce more in the evaluation. Um, I like Algier in the Hall of Good, uh, but in, in line to potentially have touches at the running back position is basically why Ty- Tyler Algier is there for me. Um, moving on, next well, is, is we, Wandell we, Robinson. Well, we talked about Algier in the rookie mock that we just, or the, the redraft mock that we just put out with J. Mike. And, you know, he did come in and play later in that mm-hmm. game. He was like the third or fourth running back off the depth chart. You had read some stuff. They wanted to see what they had in Allison. Sure. And, and, and see Damian Williams. Was Damien look good? And so did Allison in that game. Yeah. Like they both looked they all, pretty everybody good. Everybody looked good. But all every coach is going to play the preseason different. The Rams don't play anybody. Other guys are just going to work guys in how they see fit, what they see. You know, it's just so that's some of it. Some of it just at all. some of it just is stop reading into so much of it. Yeah. Um, some of it is absolutely. Yeah. This this is probably how this is going to play out. And other of other things is like, hey, we're, we're trying to figure some shit out over here. Uh, you know, and see what guys look like in they live action. They still have Cordero. So they do. I, I Looks just, a little muddy. It does. It certainly does. But I'm going to take the opportunity. They, they, they've they seemingly liked him all through camp, um, and there's a path to a reasonable amount of touches there. Uh, so I'll take the I'll take the flyer on Algier there uh, for uh, me. I can't get a, I can't get a mention. My boy Zamir doesn't come into play at all not, here yet. Not for me yet. Um, I think Josh Jacobs there is, is going to hold that thing down. Um, For more than one year. Maybe not, but I then we'll just – I I don't know what's going to happen after one year. Like you just said that, you know, Damian Pierce could be replaced next year. I mean, obviously Zamir White could be or Zamir White could be, hey, no, he's – because he, I like Zamir. He's the incumbent and, and we're going to roll with him. Uh, but, you know, I think Josh Jacobs is going to hold down that position. It may be they're probably going to use um, – a committee at times but i think you know well josh jacobs uh you should drop him down because he didn't uh he was out there in the hall of fame game yeah i didn't see anybody talking shit last week when josh jacobs didn't play at all there was no uh there was no hey i uh, gotta keep moving josh jacobs down he, he sat out with all the every rest of the starters. other running back on that roster played the next week josh jacobs didn't He's the best player on that team. He is. The, or the best running back on that team. Best running back. The the coach now knows he's the best running back on the team. Like, they're probably still going to use the committee. took a preseason game for McDaniels to I mean, I, I think that was just, hey, let's, again, let's get out there. Let's see what we got. Let's put him in pads. He hasn't got a whole lot of live action, and and we're good. We, we know what we got in Jacobs. He's the best pass catcher we got. And he's the best runner we got. Like, <laughs> this is dumb. Samir has, like, five is, catches in the preseason, though. Uh, I mean, what do you know? I think, again, I think there will be committee, and you could certainly make a case for Zamir here. Just for me, I got him pushed down a little bit here. Uh, it's Wandell next for me. Um, I like everything about Wandell. I could I could move him up three spots here and have no problem with that. 
I think he's going to come out and have an immediate impact PPR wise for that team. It's just how good can Daniel Jones be? Um, we'll see. But I think Al or uh, I think Wandell's got a nice path to targets, a nice path to starting, a nice path to um, Dable really creating something for Wandell Robinson, who also has you know a little bit of gadget to him, um, but. A little bit of speed. He right. used to play running right. back. Right. You can get you can get some tricky things it's going quick. on with him. And you could get that. You know, you saw in a couple of those games with Isaiah McKenzie. He's definitely a way better Isaiah McKenzie. But like you saw in a couple of games where Isaiah started. It's one game, I think. And Isaiah they just, really balled they, they out. They did all sorts of different shit with him. And like I think, catches. you know, you could, you could see Wandell really being, you know, placated into that offense of being really effective. I um, think we started Isaiah McKenzie that, that we week sure in, did. in the triflex. That oh, was yeah. Fucking awesome. <laughs> Uh, next for me, Alec Pierce. Uh, really? Yeah. That's up high. There's a, so a couple more guys here. I thought for sure you'd have above Pierce. No, I'll, I'll go with Pierce. You know, decent capital, big guy, athletic. Big, um, fast, strong. On a, on a team and an organization I trust a lot. Um, and, you know, they don't have Matt a ton Ryan of options. Pushes balls they don't have a ton of options. They don't have a tight end, really, to speak of. Paris Campbell, if out there and, and healthy. I think he will be the number two, but TBD um, and, and Pittman's going to going to do his thing. And, and Matt Ryan is, is certainly the best quarterback they've had in a minute. Um, so um, I really like that. I like Pierce. Pierce could go a little higher for some people, but he does seem in a lot of rookie drafts that he does kind of float down towards the bottom a little bit. So Alec Pierce for me there next. Well, yeah, because people want the Cowboy and people want the right. Packer. Right. Uh, well, the Packer wasn't in the, any of the rookie. I haven't done a draft yet with Romeo oh, he'll be there. in there now. We're about to uh, Romeo. Friday we start a rookie draft, and then, then following Friday we start another rookie draft. But, yeah, I'm interested to see where Romeo goes. Uh, so next for me, this is probably a little controversial. I didn't really know where to stick him. I could have moved him down three or four spots here, but I'm, I took Ritter here, got some legs, uh, got some ability. I would probably have him a little higher if I didn't, if I wasn't worried about the Falcons being bad and in the in the running to be able to draft the top flight quarterback on the next go around if they if they don't even if they do like some of what they see in Ritter like the chance to get CJ Stroud maybe is you know saying or whoever ends up being yeah. the guy next year you know it's you know you probably should make that move if if you right. don't, if you're not 100% convinced that Ritter's awesome that's what's keeping him down here for me i think he's a fine quarterback i think he could be you know, just fine. Um, so you take a shot at the end of the second on Ritter. I think so. But um, yeah, I, mean, I could push him down below Tolbert, Romeo, Robinson, Zamir, which are all the next guys for me. So I could I'd be fine with that. Uh, but if he's hanging around at the end of the second, I, I might take a shot. So I'm putting him there. He definitely the, the highlights in the end in stat line look great from that first preseason game. If you watch the game, there was a terrible shaky uh, some shaky. There was stuff. there was a terrible roughing the passer call that extended a drive that he ended up getting a touchdown on. So if they didn't make that terrible call, he doesn't have that. And then that, and then if you watch hard knocks, the end of the game, when he throws that ball up for grabs, that was not a great ball. The the, the defender just kind of made a play. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like, bad, but it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. I mean, I mean it was a good, it, 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 that easily could have like not been sure. I mean, could have been typically it's not, but, like, but I mean, whatever you, you give your guy a chance and, that's what he did. And and he made some other mistakes, but also showed you like he could run. And, and right. then the other key takeaway from that fucking game is Marcus Mariota diving head first on like five separate rushes in a preseason Marcus game. Marcus doesn't give a fuck. He said, he, I'm, listen, I'm out here to reestablish myself. Well, you're out here to get <laughs> back in the trainer's room, dude. What are you yeah. doing? You need to fucking slide, bro. What are you doing? You're diving head first gotta keep on like five rushes in, a, in the first preseason game. Let's go. Game. Wheels up Mariota. Dude, I love it. He's he about, ain't going to make it. He's too. about the birds. I mean, what's the over under on how many games he makes it before know. getting hurt? It can't be that many. It was, it was always going to be low. But but, but you got to slide. But, you got to get out of bounds, but, dude. Come on, man. But, how long have you been in the fucking league? What are you doing? What I'm seeing from Mariota, though, is pretty great. Arthur Smith has been around him a little bit. Knows how to use him a little bit. Benched him back you watch, in Tennessee. You watch a bunch of, you know, the the camp highlight stuff, and it's like he's putting he's putting balls right on Pitts, balls right on on uh, Drake. So uh, liking what I'm seeing from Mariota he needs to right put now. Put that Let's foot go. in the ground and slide though, bro. Or you're not gonna make it. You already have a pen. It's not him, man. Hurt. It's not him. He doesn't give a fuck. He's good. 
Let's go. He, Ritter's going to be making starts <laughs> this year because they have to. Ritter was the probably always making starts this year. Mario was getting hurt one way or the other. So sooner than later with that with that type of style. Next for me, Jalen Tolbert, um, rounding out the second round. Still over dupes, going Tolbert over dupes. I'll, I'll take I'll take Tolbert one one spot one spot. I'll take Tolbert. Why? Uh, just pre draft analysis. Just the fact. That, I mean, I love I I was big on Romeo because of I how didn't cheap he was. how cheap he was, and it's like he's starting to creep up. Oh, he's 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 up. It's 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 pretty close between him and Tolbert. I mean, I think Tolbert's, you know, I don't know. I could go either way, really. I mean, it's it's close. Man, let me get dubs. You could take dubs. I, for take the record, Tolbert. it's dubs. Take dubs. Um, take Romeo and, and be fine with that. You could put him right there at the end of the second, right there at the start of the third. I don't think it's I don't think it's all that much different. You're not gonna get in dubs there. Either one of those two guys. Maybe not at this point. Um, so probably not gonna get him then. I mean, that's fine. Um but Tolbert's got got. Some we already got him though in those earlier. Oh, for drafts. sure, I got, got him in every single early draft that I did. Fourth oh, round fuck dubs. yeah, dubs, hundred percent. You heard it here. Um, but you know he does. He's we he saw him good. at training at, at the uh, Senior Bowl. See, saw him at Senior Bowl. <laughs> you know, I already knew what it was. I was a little concerned of him getting off the jams. Uh, but yeah, uh, seems to be doing the just fine placement. right now. Yeah, <laughs> he's not making a perfect star. Right when he. Yeah. Catches it, um, but yeah, Tolbert right there, Dubs right there, Dubs. Um, you you got to like what you going to Dallas. We got we don't really know what's gonna kind of play out there. Hey, they just there's, keep dropping like flies. There's a there whole lot of not replaced anyone. There's a whole lot of opportunity for Tolbert uh, to be in in a pretty right. good offense. So I think right. I got them pretty much neck and neck. I don't yeah. have a great say for one or the other. I just had Tolbert. The hype hasn't been up there real. Pretty much in the same spot. So I mean, I mean, there's if you read about Tolbert, there's a lot of hype. It's just not not where it is for for Dubs because they have C.D. Lamb and they have Michael Gallup and they have Schultz right now. There is nobody else on the Packers to get any shine. Right. Um, so, um, but I, yeah, no, I got Romeo right behind him, and then I'm coming in with B. Rob and then Zamir. If you want to swip swip swap Zamir and B. Rob, I'm fine with that. It seems like B. Rob may be on track to to get Ooh. to get a chance to have. Ooh. A role when I think Zamir could carve out. I, th- I like I like the talent of Zamir way better than Brian. Not way better. But I like I give Zamir the nod over over B Rob a, a, a hair. Um, B Rob for what Zamir has over B Rob in electricity. B Rob has over Zamir in probably pass catching. Although Zamir looked pretty good this preseason catching the ball. Yeah. B B Rob, you just He's a good all around back. Right. You know, and yeah. I can see why they took him. It seemed like a little bit early, but good draft capital. Good all around. He can do everything. He does have a little bit of juice. Does have plus receiving chops. You know, played and handled a lot of work his last year at Alabama. And right. the, the, you know, if 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 Gibson's gonna be fumbling it, I can see them just being like, Look, we can't turn the ball over. I'm gonna get fired as a head coach this year if we don't show something. He just he wants to run the ball and wants to play a specific style. And you haven't been able to necessarily count on Gibson health, which he's played through some of it, and uh, his ball security. So Brian Robinson with a little path. Brian Robinson's there. probably not going to make it this far in drafts. No, especially not now. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, right. but probably not now. Right. He was uh, which is fine because then pick. somebody else up there that I like is going to get pushed down. That's the way this works. So um, Zamir, you're right. Like. Uh, I just want to take Zamir. I, I'm going to probably have to reach for him just to make sure I get him somewhere because I'm going to have to take him a little too high. You know, I, could I don't take know him. that you're going to have to reach for him in a lot of our home league drafts if that's where you're trying to run Well, it just depends in, on what I pick I have and if I can make a trade back. If you can and get if anywhere in the back of the it, second, you know? I think you can get him. Yeah. Unless something pop, unless he pops off on this next game. Because the you, last game he had game underwhelming. Wasn't as good, right. Right. So it's, we're living and dying by the preseason, even yeah. though when we're not in the preseason, everybody tells you that it's trash. But then all you do on Twitter is just see the amount of stock rising and stock falling from like three plays on the in the uh, in the preseason there. So T- Dam- Damian Pierce TDP next for me. Finally. Um, Finally, he was he's falling here, huh? He was always at the end of the second, early third for me. So just a couple spots. Um, so. Obviously, Niners right there for you, but I think Trey Sermon's going to lock up that number two duty, and then they're you know they want a, a little duty. bit different uh, back style Sermon the with, number what, two. with what Sermon. That's why they drafted Sermon. They wanted a little bit different style. 
Um, and then Elijah came in and gave him uh, a little bit something different than the style that Sermon would give him, a little bit more power in his game. And then TDP, I think, was drafted for that same reason. Hey, we're still looking for that. And now I think those two are going to kind of battle out for that role. And TDP is probably going to get some run. But I think if Sermon's healthy, I think Sermon gets the nod as the two. Um, so next, a big jumper here for me, Bellinger. This is tight end premium um, with the potential to be a tight end one for the Giants. I know it's the Giants, but... I'll take the shot on a tight end one at this point. Dable could be um, Dawson Knox. People love Dawson Knox. Right. People love Dable. Not a whole lot of competition. He's penciled in as the tight end one. He's, so been, I gotta, he's been in the one since like June, right. bro. He's not even a late thing. And, and right. then he got hurt. Right. And then got right back in with the ones. Right. He's right back in there. So like, put that guy back in. Bellinger up there for me. Uh, Dolchich next. Dolchich over likely. Talent, talent, talent. Uh, well, uh, we'll get there. There's, there's just, there's a little <laughs> bit more love for Dolchich here. So if you want to say, let's take Dolchich, and I think you'll be quicker to maybe move off of Dolchich. It just seems like there could be a little opportunity for Dolchich to take over the number one spot for an offense that could be pretty prolific. So I'm giving him the slight nod over likely. I like likely as maybe the tight end one in this group over all these guys. I think he's fucking that awesome. But Mark Andrews does stand in the way of him potentially being like that dude um now maybe they turn him into a little bit more of a wide receiver over there maybe they run a lot of 12 um and crush with likely likely will be on pretty much every one of my teams i think he's awesome yeah he didn't test well but if you watch it on the field watch the way the he moves around games. the way he for a tight end it's awesome um and he's just been slaying out there he looked good in the preseason uh so yeah dolchich a, a, a twit a titch a, a, a little tick over him because of the opportunity of maybe turning into the tight end one for the uh the broncos there the and russell wilson let's ride let's ride <laughs> um dp was just crushing, crushing that shit. <laughs> so likely likely 31 nobody's gonna have him that high um 32 shakir for the bills um, if you're in your, if you're in your, how's he, how's he holding so strong? I didn't see, this seems like a high for Shakir. If, if you're in, and if I like Shakir. If you're in, uh, you know, dynasty drafts, get, get McKenzie, get Crowder and get Shakir and you just figure you, out which you one got, it you is. You got a slot. You got for, a player. For the bills. Um, and I think Shakir's look great in his action. Um, he, 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 had, he went out there and dominated. Yep. Um, I think he's just a really good player, good temperament, good human. Um, and I, I, I just, we're on the bills we're running out of like great receivers down here. I think he's the best receiver out of all these guys left. He's on the Bills. What maybe, about your boy? At the maybe McKenzie's the guy, and it hangs around for a while. Maybe Gabe Davis isn't any good. Maybe Shakir, you know. Maybe Gabe Davis isn't any good. I mean, maybe we don't know. Maybe Gabe Davis is Claypool. One big game where everybody saw it and you're excited about it, and you know maybe he's just not quite as good as you think he was, and Shakir could do a little more for you. I'm just saying there's there's room for Shakir to work in there, and we're in the third round right now. I'm a guy who's the Bills, who I like the talent, I like the ability. So Shakir for me here. Uh, then next going to be Kyron Williams. Uh, we're already seeing. Obviously, if Kyron didn't have a foot injury right now and right. didn't break his foot, yeah. both of those running backs on the Rams are out, banged up. I think Kyron probably, you know, the best, if not the second or third best pass protector on this. Got plus hands. In this draft. Um, in the draft, yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm still taking Kyron. You can drop him as far as you want. I'm, I'm still interested. I still really like the player. I like the landing spot. Um, bummer that he broke the foot. And then right after that is Pierre Strong. If you wanted to flip those two, wouldn't have any problem with it. A little bit of news of maybe uh, that – they're fielding some calls for Harris. If he moved out of there, then that would be a bump up for Pierre Strong. But I like Pierre Strong a good bit. Probably projects a little bit more of being potentially coming into a workhorse role than than Kyron would be. But I mean, the it way the sounds, Rams, the way the Rams could use Kyron would be uh, awesome. From from like the latest blurbs on Pierre Strong is not good. He like can't pick up pass protection. Yeah, maybe he was like the last back to even he's play at all. He's coming from FCS. I mean, he think he played got a little curve, but I like what I couple, saw. Uh, series in that game, like they that, and you know Billy B is not gonna fuck around at all. Like, no, I mean it just no. seems like he's behind the eight ball at this point. Maybe so. That, to me, this seems too high. Maybe it, sticking, maybe it was a, maybe it was one fucking day at practice dude like you can't get, we can't get caught up in one blurb about him being so behind the eight ball like i'm just i'm gonna go with the player evaluation of what pierre strong is good player 
It might take him a minute. He was he's buried. He's absolutely buried on that depth chart. There's a good possibility that Damon Harris goes nowhere. So Pierre Strong's going to sit there for a year and figure it out. He's a good player. I'm going to stick to the talent for the most part at this point. I know I just said Dolchich, but there is good talent with Dolchich. He just has a better opportunity than likely. Um, the next pick is Pacheco, uh, I think, for me. Probably right. going to be I, he, gone way before that. Right. He's never like he's going way probably ahead of Kyron. I'm not going to pretend like I had a good evaluation on Pacheco. I'm not going to pretend like I even really knew anything about Pacheco. All I know is right now that he's possibly competing for the RB2 job at the Chiefs. And from everything I've seen has looked really good. And the talent looks like it can check out now. Like Pacheco's probably going like eight yeah. spots higher than there's zero percent chance that I'm getting Pacheco. So I just I had to throw him in somewhere. So I threw him in here, and there he is. Next, rounding out the third round, Kyle Phillips. I uh, thought you'd have just, him higher than just that. Just an absolute beast. Uh, well, right. Great mover. He's getting some love. Uh, but, you know, we'll see where he plays out in the hierarchy of, you know, startability. Probably not going to be great off the rip. But I think Kyle Phillips is one of my favorite third-round stabs uh, out, of, out of any of these receivers he left. He does at least fall, even though he's getting right. Ripe. He still falls. So Kyle Phillips, great shifty slot receiver, could return punts and and getting some buzz. Just solid lunch pill hard hat kind of guy. Uh, Velas Jones He's next. White. Got right. <laughs> got got the draft capital. Hand, Velas handpicked. Velas by, uh, doesn't even get drafted these days. Sometimes. Hand, handpicked by by uh, polls and fields, fields. After watching films together, they said, "Hey, we don't have a lot of picks. We like this guy." There is some you know possibility of some. You know, gadgety, runny kind of stuff with Velas, and they don't really have a whole lot of other options. We're we're in the third, fourth round here. I'll take a guy with third round capital with, with a lot uh -oh. of opportunity. I don't really care. It doesn't matter. Yeah. If, I'm not. You know, if we were in the first round, maybe it would matter. We're in the third or fourth round. Um, he's he's fast. He's big. He's physical, um, and maybe he sucks. But maybe every single rest of this person, people on this list, suck. He doesn't so, even have a breakout age. Right. Uh, Jerome Ford next. Uh, I feel like it's a win-win with Jerome Ford. Uh, if they do trade Kareem somehow, which doesn't seem like they're going to, uh, he probably slots right into the RB2 for the Browns. And then if he doesn't, Kareem Hunt leaves or Chubb gets hurt or anybody gets hurt, he slots in for the RB2. Or next year when Kareem Hunt's probably not there anymore, he's probably slotting in as the RB2 uh, for the Browns. Looked good in his debut, kind of can do it all. I don't know if you know this or not, but he played at Alabama. Um <laughs> Before so, Cincy. Before Cincy. Yeah. Um, so Ford uh, right there. And then Haskins next. Um, there's They got they kind of have a decent amount of decent looking running backs over there and that nobody knows anything about over in Tennessee. Um, Chestnut played really well. I think that was his name. I don't really know a ton about him. Uh, but he played pretty well. Uh, they have Dontrell Hilliard, um, who played really well at in, in some spots last, last, uh, last off or last season. Um, but Haskins, uh, little running back stab for you there. Uh, Matt Corral next, just super flexing it. I know Baker just went there, but we're in the fourth round, so we're, we'll take a quarterback here. Uh, we'll, we'll pick on Matt Corral. And then Jelani, Jelani Woods next. Uh, that's just a, basically a talent athleticism stab at the tight end position for the Colts. In a situation where they want a good tight end, they just right. haven't found one. They still don't have one, but we'll see if Jelani, he's a he's former quarterback, uh, so he hasn't been playing the position a ton. A ton. Fun Qu tape. QB, quarterback. Fun not tape. Not cornerback. Uh, so right. Big, big athletic fella, uh, Jelani Woods there. And then Tyquan Thornton next. Uber athleticism, great draft capital. Good preseason uh, week one. Good preseason. Going to take the top off for that. They kind of, you know, could use a guy like that, even though Bourne can can kind of do that. Aguilar can kind of do that. But Thornton, you know, every, the reason he's probably still down here right now is because nobody really thought that, that was going to be there. And everybody's been getting stung by the Patriots wide receiver draft. I mean, you call it what you will. You call it whatever you want and say that's silly. But I think that's really kind of what it is right now. I'll still I got no problem taking the flyer on him, though, once we get into the fourth round. Fine. Why not? Um, next on darts here. Next for me. Uh. Abner Ebner uh, for the Bears, kind of a cheap-ish Monty handcuff, kind of all-around player, good receiving chops, pretty explosive, pretty good runner, bigger, better version of Tyreek. What what you what at least the usage of maybe that you could see from Tyreek. So uh, he's next for me. 
Um, and then Danny Gray, we saw him just get a little love, kind of, well, maybe a little bit similar. Caught a 76-yard touchdown. In the Tyquan Thornton mold where he, he could take, the Niners needed somebody who could take the top off, and he's the guy who can take the top off, and now you got Lance who can hit him. Um, but that's just a stab in the dark and third-round capital along Gray. Um, so, you know, you got to like that. Next, Sam Howell, quarterback. As fourth round, I mean, end of the fourth, end of the draft, pretty much. I'll take a shot on him. Uh, Aquano, the uh, Tennessee tight end. Hooper's been giving him some love. Uber athletic guy. He's got a little out bit of, of Maryland. Me in him. Yeah, so I'll take him. And then we're going to round out with three more tight ends because it's tight end premium. Once we get into the fourth round, I'll start stabbing on a bunch of tight ends if they're hanging around. I got Kate Otten next and Charlie Kohler, who's out with a, a hernia. Then you could throw in Jeremy Rucker. Um, and then Kevin Harris. And uh, that's probably about it. Um, so Azukama. Azukama has been getting some getting some buzz and some love. It's just probably going to be an uphill battle for him to get any love. So, you know, first round of waivers, if you got some space, scoop them up. So that rounds out all of the... Uh, final rankings for me let me know what you think tell me where i'm right tell me where i'm wrong tell me i'm an idiot whatever just doing this for your pleasure um because i got you guys like it i gotta give a shout out to foreman he he would wonder where Keontae. he didn't even didn't get make the list there. for me didn't make the four honorable list. mention honorable he's getting mention. drafted sure he's getting drafted i mean if it wasn't tight end premium i would draft Keontae. okay Late fourth, little Tyler Beatty shout out, a little late. Yeah, late, that's late. A, that's a great call right there. That's that's another non premium. I'll take Beatty, and if he if he hangs out, I'll take him first round of waivers as well. Um, I, I did you know kind of an anomaly player there, uh, but you know liked what you saw. A lot of fun tape at Missouri there. Yeah, um, Ravens, Gus Edwards missing time, Justice Hill, who knows? So yeah, good call by you. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys for joining us. Yeah, let us know who we missed, who you like, what you didn't like. Leave a comment down below. If you're watching on YouTube, definitely let me get that subscribe -y. Send me a screenshot of a five-star review on Instagram, Twitter, theffdynasty at gmail.com. Enter you into win a free t-shirt or just go over to revelrybrewingco.com and buy one yourself. It's fresh, it's soft, and it'll mm -hmm. last fucking ever. Yeah. And, uh, you know... Go tell, go tell your loved ones that you love them. Yeah. Agreed. Reach out if you need some help and, and, and talk to your friends, man. Because uh, mental health is a real thing. And uh, we, we got to all monitor ourselves and all of our friends and loved ones. So just tell, reach out, tell someone you love them. Love you, Case. As much love as I too. fucking hate you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, y'all. We'll be back with some more FF Dynasty for your pleasure. Peace. <clears throat> <clears throat>